How's it going, everyone? I hope you're all having a wonderful day. I'm AMS, and today I am finally going to be discussing a character I've been wanting to talk about for a very long time. She is someone who grew up with everything and then lost it all and became a much better person because of it. Today, we are going to be discussing Yona from Yona of the Dawn. I have briefly talked about her in a previous video, so for today's video, I'm going to go into more details about her past, personality, and overall development throughout the series. And here is the obligatory spoiler warning for both the anime and manga, so be wary of spoilers. She may not be an overpowered character, or an incredibly intelligent character at that, but she is the most encouraging and heartwarming character out there. She attempts to correct any wrongdoings while being fully aware of her own shortcomings. Despite not being strong or cunning, she continues to move forward to help those in need while slowly improving herself to better protect the country her father used to rule over. She went from being a sheltered princess to a nation's hero while slowly fixing the country her father unknowingly allowed to crumble. The story takes place in a country referred to as the Coca Kingdom. The current king, Il, is known as a peace-loving king who has an extreme dislike of weapons, so much so that he doesn't allow the guards to carry swords within the castle. Because of this, his daughter Yona grew up not knowing much about violence or battle. Also, the king spoiled her like crazy, giving her everything she ever wanted, except for the hand of Suwon whom she was in love with. Suwon is the king's nephew and a close personal friend of both Yona and her personal bodyguard and general, Hawk. Despite this, King Il refused Yona's plea to give Suwon his blessing to marry her. Still, Yona wanted to marry him and was willing to do anything to get her father's blessing. Unwilling to give up, she visited her father's chamber late at night, hoping to convince him that Suwon would make a perfect heir for his throne. However, when she wandered into his chamber, she found him being stabbed by Suwon. When asked why he did it, Suwon responded by stating that Il killed his father and he was merely avenging his death. He was then about to execute Yona since she witnessed him kill the king, only to be stopped by Hawk who realized something was up. Hawk then proceeded to escape the castle with Yona. For the next few days, Yona was in a state of mental shock where she barely ate or reacted to Hawk when he spoke to her. For the next few days of traveling, she doesn't really react to much, except when her hairpin that was gifted to her by Suwon was brought up. Hawk wanted to toss it away, but Yona couldn't bear to part ways with it showing that despite everything that had happened, she couldn't bring herself to stop loving Suwon. It was clear that she hated him for killing her father and nearly killing her, but she didn't stop loving him because of it. She was in love with him for so long, she didn't know how to not love him, so she hung onto the hairpin as a memento for when her life made sense. Her and Hawk continued to travel until they were tracked down by a man named Kan Taejun. Kan Taejun is the second son of the Fire Tribe General, one of the four great generals of Koka Kingdom. Kan Taejun was notorious for constantly trying to court Princess Yona in an attempt to seize the throne for himself. Obviously, Yona had no interest in him and thought of him as nothing more than a nuisance. In a final attempt to take control of the throne, Tai Taejun wanted to capture Yona and use her influence to overthrow Suwon. However, his forces were up against Hak who was the general of the Wind Tribe, one of the four great generals like his father. However, unlike his father, Hawk was famous for his unrivaled strength. Hawk was nicknamed the Thunder Beast because of his incredibly fast and powerful swing speed, which allowed him to gain the reputation as Koka's strongest warrior. He would make quick work of Taejun's foot soldiers, so he decided to have his archers aim for Yona instead to force Hawk to become a human shield to protect her. The plan succeeded in injuring Hawk with a poisoned arrow causing his movements to become more sluggish. Hawk forced Yona to hide while he drew in the enemy's attention, giving her a chance to escape. However, Yona couldn't bear to sacrifice her closest friend. And when she saw Hawk fall off a cliff, she steadied her resolve and went to help him. Hawk was able to hang on to the edge of the cliff, but his strength was fading due to the poison. Yona managed to quickly grab his arm before he fell. Unfortunately, she was unable to pull him up and they both fell into the ravine. Taejun, believing he had killed the princess, fell into a state of depression and asked King Suwon to execute him, to which Suwon refused. And of course, Yona and Hawk survived the fall, and they were rescued by a boy named Yoon who nursed them both back to health. When Hawk regained consciousness, he scolded Yona for not fleeing when she had the chance, to which Yona responded by stating that she refused to let Hawk be a human shield for her. She wanted to grow strong enough to fight by Hawk's side, and not be a burden on him. Hawk, however, didn't want to put Yona in danger, 
so he refused to let her learn how to use a sword, especially since the king he respected so much wanted to keep weapons away from her. However, he wasn't willing to let her travel around unarmed. So he had her do the one thing her father never wanted her to do, and that was wield a weapon. He began teaching her how to shoot a bow while they traveled. Before they left, Yoon introduced him to the priest he had been living with, and the priest had the ability to prophesy the future. He foretold that Yona was going to meet the four dragons of legend who are a part of the country's founding. The legend states that one of the dragon gods, Hideyu, the red dragon, came to earth and became a human. The other four dragons gave their blood to four humans to protect Hideyu. The white one got the arm, the green one got the leg, the blue one got the eyes, and the yellow one got the body of a dragon. The priest told them to seek out the four dragons to help protect them. They ended up traveling around looking for the four dragons. And after meeting the white dragon, we learn that Yona is the reincarnation of Hideyu, whom the four dragons are sworn to protect. After traveling around and seeing some of the hardships that the citizens had to endure as a result of her father's poor decision making, Yona felt responsible and guilty for being ignorant of the people's suffering while she was living comfortably in luxury. After gathering the four dragons, she swore to make her country a better place. The guilt she felt from living a happy and luxurious life while there were people dying of hunger and disease, filled her with disgust. She wanted to fix the country, and she had the capability to do so. While they were going around recruiting the four dragons, they came across a poor town that was being controlled by a lord who would kidnap young, good-looking women to sell them as slaves. The green dragon was working for a pirate group stealing from that lord and trying to save the women. When Yona learned of this, she wanted to do anything she could to save them. But the captain of the pirates saw Yona as a hindrance due to her weak physique. Yona wasn't willing to stand aside and watch as her friends put their life on the line. So the captain decided to give her a test to see if she is willing to put her life on the line for the mission. She sent Yona to retrieve a medical herb that grows on a steep cliff and Yona traversed the narrow pathway to reach the herb. Despite being terrified, she displayed an unshakable resolve and willingness to put herself in dangerous situations to save those she cares for. She may put herself in life-threatening situations, but she is not willing to die. She will struggle and fight her way to survive, which is displayed through her constant pursuit of self-improvement. She constantly asks Hak to train her in swordsmanship, so she has something to rely on in close quarters. However, no matter how much she trains, her physique is still small and weak, so she has to go to extreme lengths to support her friends. For example, when they learned that the Lord was planning to sell the women he kidnapped to the Kai Empire, Yona and Yoon, who was dressed up as a woman, allowed themselves to be captured so they could find out where the women and the Lord are. They knew they were going on a boat heading for the Kai Empire to sell the slaves, so Yoon prepared a flare to shoot up in the sky to alert the pirates to which boat they were on. Again, Yona put herself in a dangerous situation to help others, but this time, instead of being terrified, she displayed her fierce emotions in the face of danger. The Lord was informed that they captured a woman with bright red hair. The Lord was intrigued by this and went to go see her, and he began attacking anyone who tried to stop him from harassing Yona, even if they were his own men. He expected Yona to be trembling in fear, but she merely glared at him, which caused him to release her and jump back in fear. Her and Yoon then proceeded with breaking out of their cell and lighting the flare. In the end, Yona shot the Lord as he was attempting to kill the green dragon and escape. Yona fully displayed her archery training by hitting the Lord directly in the heart, instantly killing him. This was the first person Yona killed, showing everyone that she is no longer someone they had to coddle. She could fight alongside them. Now that she had proven she can keep up with them, she wanted to add more techniques to her arsenal. Hence the swordsman training. She also began sparring with Hawk so she can have actual combat experience, which later proved to be vital. Before I get into that, I want to talk about Yona's most important characteristic, and that is her tenacity. When she sets her mind onto something, she absolutely refuses to give up. And this mindset helped motivate the people around her, like Taejun for example. After Yona fell from the cliff, he assumed she was dead and fell into a state of depression. He lazed around the castle doing nothing for weeks on end until his older brother decided to put him to work. There were a group of bandits robbing their tax collectors and his men have been unable to capture them. So he sent Taejun out to catch them and he was not permitted to return home until he completed this mission. While traveling, he discovered that the bandits who were stealing their taxes was Yona and her group, the Dark Dragon and the Happy Hungry Bunch. Yes, that is what they called themselves. 
which actually was a brilliant name because it was so ridiculous no one took the soldiers seriously when they would say it. After seeing the formerly sheltered princess going around to these worn down and disease ridden villages and doing everything she can to help them including giving them all of their food while they themselves haven't had much to eat. Seeing how hard Yona was working to help the villagers inspired Taejun. So he started stealing food from the soldiers barracks and bringing it to the villagers. He was happy to help Yona. But he felt like the amount of aid he was giving her wasn't anywhere near the amount she was giving. Yoon, seeing that Taejun wanted to help, decided to give him some advice. He had Taejun use the pretext of catching the bandits to build clinics around the village and start treating the ill and hungry. Taejun used to be a coward who didn't care about anyone but himself. But after seeing Yona going to disease ridden villages and helping the citizens inspired him to do the same. However, when one of his soldiers fell, there was no room in the clinics to house him. So Taejun opened up his own room to him and began taking care of him. However, Taejun eventually grew scared that he himself has also caught the illness and began to consider going back home. But Yoon and Yona showed up and encouraged him. They told him that he was doing a good job of taking care of his subordinates. And when the other soldiers saw how their commander was going around helping the citizens and even opened up his room for a sick subordinate, they were also motivated to help as much as they can. All of this just because Taejun was reunited with Yona. He went around to all of these struggling villages and both clinics brought them food and supplies to save them from their hunger. He gained the love of his soldiers and the citizens and became a well-respected commander of the fire tribe. Taejun wasn't the only influential person Yona helped motivate. She also helped motivate a woman named Lily. Lily was the daughter of the water tribe general. A general who was well known for remaining calm under any circumstances and taking a wait and see approach. Many of the cities under his jurisdiction were suffering from a drug problem. The drug Nadai was being smuggled in from the Kai Empire and the general was worried that if he acted rashly it would spark a war. For the water tribe at the time going to war was not ideal. For you see under King Il's reign the five tribes were not united. If the water tribe went to war it's not guaranteed that the other tribes will support them. Also I just realized something. I have been referring to them as the four great generals. There's five of them. There's the water, fire, earth, wind and sky. Just a correction I want to make really quick. As I was saying, if the water tribe went to war, it's not guaranteed that the other five tribes will support them. So it would be a losing battle. However, his daughter Lily didn't feel the same way. She didn't want her people to fall victim to this drug any longer. So she started investigating the various cities under her father's domain. She ended up running into Yona and her group and thought they might be Kai smugglers. She followed them into a bar, believing that they were going to be selling Nadai when it turned out that they themselves were also looking for the smugglers as well. A few of the addicts ended up going crazy and started a brawl, and Lily got caught up in it. She was absolutely terrified. She didn't know what to do. All she could think about was going back to her home and just hiding away in her room. She wanted to get away from all of the danger. In that moment, Yona flew in with a flying roundhouse kick that knocked down the person holding on to her. The rest of the Happy Hungry Bunch were restraining the other addicts and looking for the dealer who was selling them the drugs. In the end, they were able to round up the addicts but had no luck finding any of the dealers. Yona asked Lily why she was following them around. Lily stated that they all looked suspicious and thought they were smugglers. After some time, Lily's servants came to escort her back home. All the while, Lily couldn't believe how a girl her age was able to fight off a man twice her size. Despite not having any strength, Yona displayed courage and initiative by quickly acting despite being scared. Unlike Lily who quickly panicked and wanted to flee. Yuna jumped in head first to save someone in danger. This was something that Lily admired. She wanted to save people as well, but when things got challenging, she began regretting the decision to do so. This infuriated her more than anything else. She wanted to protect her kingdom, but quickly cowered away the moment things got too tough for her. While Yona stood tall and proud in the face of danger, showing no signs of turning her back on her resolve. So Lily decided to do the same. She was not willing to make the same mistake. She would stand headstrong and continue to move forward. She visited the hungry bunch the next day and found them camping outside. She was surprised at the fact that they weren't able to stay in an inn. So Lily offered to have them stay in the same inn as her. While some of the guys went around looking for the dealers, Yona, Lily, and her two servants were relaxing at the inn only to discover that the leader of the smugglers was staying at the same inn as them. 
The leader was trying to force the innkeeper to drug his own liquor with Nadai. One of Lily's servants happened to overhear this and was stabbed by the leader. Lily and Yona confronted him in an attempt to save her. Lily wasn't able to do anything. Yona had to fight off the enemy single-handedly, but thanks to her training, she was able to do so swiftly. Although she did get overwhelmed at first, she was able to hold them off until one of the enemy guards tried to attack Lily. So Yona shielded her with her own body and was severely wounded. Then the blue dragon, who was coming to see what was taking them so long to get back, showed up and defeated the rest of the guards. He was about to capture the leader, but Yona wanted to ask him a few questions first. The leader was about to pull out a hidden dagger and stab the blue dragon, but Yona noticed it and sliced his face, leaving a second scar on his forehead. Unfortunately, Yona collapsed after this, allowing the leader a chance to escape because the blue dragon's priority was saving the two severely wounded people instead of capturing him. Again, Lily was amazed by how someone with such a small physique was able to defeat several strong opponents. They may not have been incredibly skilled, but they were still strong nonetheless. And Yona was even willing to put her life on the line for someone she barely knew. Yona did this because Lily was also trying to save the country so Yona couldn't just let her die so easily. After all of this, Lily couldn't just sit around and do nothing. They managed to successfully extract intel from the guards they captured and learn where the leader's base is. Lily went to go plea with her father to mobilize his soldiers, but the general was afraid to start a massive war that will cause his domain to fall into ruin. Lily believed it will fall into ruin if they do nothing. So she stole her father's seal and went to the barracks and recruited the soldiers to fight against the leader and the Kai noble he called in to help him. Lily would have never had the courage to act as boldly as she did before meeting Yona. Seeing her act so bravely in the face of danger and even put her life on the line for her showed Lily just how shallow she was thinking. She needed to go to more extreme lengths in order to fulfill her wish. After a few battles and minor confrontations, they managed to drive back the noble and capture the leader. Yona's important characteristic and defining trait isn't only her actions and personality alone, it's how they affect those around her. She turned a selfish and cowardly man into a hero of the people. She inspired a kind and caring person to continue her quest to save a city, nay, an entire country from the threat of a deadly drug. She doesn't do these things because she hopes to inspire others or even get a reward out of it. As a matter of fact, when she does get a reward, it's typically something less than what she gave them. She just does what comes naturally to her and it has a positive effect on everyone around her including her own allies. Not all of the dragons joined her immediately. Some only decided to follow her after witnessing her determination to keep pushing forward, as well as her unshakable resolve to help those in need. Yona is considered to be a brave character not because she doesn't fear anything. She is actually afraid of a lot of things, but she doesn't let that fear hinder her. She continues to act in the face of overwhelming challenges because there is something she fears more than death. She is afraid of losing those she could have protected. It's not only her allies, but also the people who are suffering. She can't forgive herself for being ignorant of the state of her country, so she wants to do what's best for it, even if it means forgetting about her own revenge. There were a couple of times when she ran into Sumwon in the story, and she would feel angry when she saw him, but she didn't act upon those feelings. No matter how much she wanted to kill Sumwon, she recognized that he's good for the country. Unlike her father, who let the country fall into ruin, Suwon was going around trying to fix it. Also, it does help that she still has feelings for him. Good news is that those feelings are not strong. She won't do something stupid like put her and her ally's life on the line for him. Also, keep in mind, she's only 16 or 17 years old. She is still a teenager and making all of these mature decisions at such a young age is something unthinkable for someone with her background. But from the get-go, she knew she had to help those in need and she's willing to put her life on the line for it, which is troubling for her allies. But she can't sit around doing nothing and solely relying on them. She displays the quality of a true leader but wishes to travel the country to help as many people as she can and even discarded any thoughts about revenge because they benefit no one. She puts other people's needs and wants before her own. There is no longer any sign of the sheltered princess there once was. Now all we see is a saint who goes around giving everything she has to those who have nothing. She values the life of others more than her own. That doesn't mean she doesn't care about her own life. I mean, she can't help people if she's dead, but she's not willing to watch as other people are in danger. At least not again. It did happen once when she was still trying to lay low. She saw some guards terrorizing a restaurant. 
She ignored it, fearing that she would draw too much attention to herself. As a result of it, guards ended up beating a little kid to death, and Yona regretted not acting when she had the chance to. And that regret is displayed in how she acts in dangerous situations. The death of the kid clearly haunts her, so she will not stand by just because she could lose her life. That's why she shielded Lily and traversed a narrow pathway to reach a medical herb. Because she knows not acting at all will cause someone to lose their life. And she will not allow that to happen. Which is why she is the biggest chat lass in all of anime. And that is going to be it for this one folks. I appreciate all of you who made it to this point in the video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. And remember to keep having fun. See ya.